YouTube. For this week's tutorial, I'm going to be focusing on the Adobe Reports and Analytics Pathing Reports. So you can see here under Paths, um, there's a number of, I have a number of different um, pathing options. I'm going to focus on Pages, that's the default. You can uh, enable pathing for other types of reporting uh, within the tool, and I'll go over that uh, in a different tutorial. So today I'm going to just focus on the various different um, Pages pathing reports that we have here. And uh, from there, um, if you have any questions related to um, the pathing reports that I go through, if you want me to go into more detail on any specific one, leave a comment below. I would greatly appreciate your feedback uh, and letting me know so that I can kind of tailor these tutorials a little bit better for my audience. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the first report is the next page flow. Uh, which, as you can see here, is basically a graphical representation of how the pages kind of flow from the first page, and it defaults to home page, although you can always change the starting page of this flow report. Uh, it just will default to home page unless you are um, looking at something else, and then if you uh, rerun the report, it'll rerun based off of um, some other page that you've selected. And you can see here it kind of gives you two levels. Um, the first uh, set of pages or exits from the home page, and then the uh, the second level after that. And then uh, the next report is just next page report. And so instead of giving you the flow as a standard uh, report uh, with your bar graph and your raw data at the bottom, and it just basically gives you the first step, the first list of next pages, including also how many uh, people have exited the site as well as their next page, for example. Now the next page flow report gives you a little bit more detail on the next level. This particular report, the next page report, actually allows you to drill a little bit deeper with other metrics, uh, including um, the next page, uh, next level, etc. And you can actually continue following that beyond um, the second page, third page um, of the flow as well. Uh, so you have a number of different kind of correlations and kind of basically drill down metrics that you can get into with the next page report. Now we have the previous page flow, which, you know, unsurprisingly is going to be uh, exactly like the next page flow, except it's showing the previous pages um, also in two levels. And what flows into here is uh, selected as the home page again. Uh, although, as I said, you can always change that. Or you can actually click on any one of these other pages uh, within the flow report, and it'll change the focus as to uh, which page it is. Um, and then, of course, here's the previous page report, very similar to, um, or exactly the same as the page report, just uh, with what the previous page was rather than uh, the uh, next page. All right, now we're going to move on to the Fallout report. Now, this one actually is a little app that is included with Adobe Reports and Analytics, and you uh, click to open this up. And this uh, creates a Fallout report similar to Google Analytics Goals, uh, if you have ever worked with Google Analytics before. And uh, here I'm going to do a little example. So I'm going to start with the home page. And then I can drag in uh, whatever other pages I want to see. And here I'm using contact and my thank you page to kind of look at my conversion rate from people who hit the home page and then uh, ultimately end up with thank you. And I could have also done all visits rather than the home page, but in this case, I just decided to do the home page. And here you can see the fallout from how many, how many people looked at the home page. Uh, went down uh, like 9.6% to the contact page and then the 2.4% who ultimately ended up at the um, the thank you page. And so I have a 2.4% uh, conversion rate, which actually for my site isn't, uh, it actually isn't very bad at all. It's actually a decent fallout rate. So uh, with that uh, in mind, uh, this kind of gives you uh, a lot of flexibility and you can just kind of create these reports on the fly uh, which you can't do with Google Analytics goals. Um, you have to set up the goals ahead of time and it doesn't get populated until after you set up the goals and things so um, that's a, a good reason to use the fallout uh, report here with Adobe. Now we're in the uh, full paths report and here you can see um, basically the full paths that visits uh, visitors have taken and how many times that particular specific full path has been used. Most full paths are going to be um, viewed one time, um, but the most popular ones, like for example, number one, uh, entered the site, exited the you know, 
enter the site at the home page and exit the site. It's going to be the most popular. But then you can actually see other types of paths, full paths that have been used. Um, this report I don't tend to use uh, very often. Um, if I do use it, I often use it for troubleshooting. If I'm seeing people get stuck somewhere and I don't, I can't use the fallout report because I don't know where they're getting stuck or how they're getting stuck. And so using the full paths and kind of seeing um, how people are flowing through the site and possibly trying to uh, use this report to identify places where people might be getting stuck and helping me kind of hone in on where there might be issues with the site, either in the design or um, the technical, etc. All right, moving on to the Pathfinder report. I'm not going to go and run any example reports on this because there's quite a lot of, um, that I can do with this. But you can see here, um, it has the description of the reports and kind of a graphical representation for each. Um, there is the precede pattern, then there's the follow pattern, the bookends pattern, and ultimately the, sand, the sandwich pattern, and then also a custom pattern that you can customize as well. So you have to know kind of what pattern you want to um, look at before, ahead of time based on the question that you're asking yourself, and then um, choose the correct report. Um, nine times out of ten, custom pattern is the one that I think most of the time I use because I'm not quite sure always uh, what pattern is the best one, and so I tend to often use the custom pattern. Um, if you want me to go into more detail on this report, let me know in the comments and I'll definitely uh, do a, a, an entire tutorial just on that particular pathing report. All right, so now the next report is going to be the path length report. Uh, this report I use most often in order to determine the site-wide bounce rate. Now, I know from an analytics perspective, the site-wide bounce rate is an absolutely useless number and generally... Um, shouldn't be used. However, a lot of um, executive level folks use it as a, a, a measuring stick for the health of their website. Uh, <laughs> and while I tend to discourage people from wanting that data, they very often insist on it anyway. And if you look at uh, visits at one page on this particular report, um, and you can see the percentage over here, um, that percentage actually correlates identically to the site-wide uh, bounce rate. You can use um, other methods to calculate this, um, but to me this is much quicker. You just come here, uh, you look at the visits to one page, look at the percentage uh, for whatever time frame you're looking at, and boom, there's your number. And it's just a lot faster than having to set up the, uh, the other types of calculations. And um, I have verified, both with Adobe as well as with my own um, measuring uh, and, and running reports, that that number matches the bounce rate exactly. Now I do have a higher bounce rate on my site, but that's mainly because I am a blog style site and blogs tend to always have a higher bounce rate. So um, I always preface my bounce rate um, information to my uh, to my clients based on the type of website they have you know and whether their bounce rates over 50 percent or below 50 percent and whether or not there's a concern there or not um, it really depends on the style of site the type of site and everything but generally you want to focus on page level bounce rate and not site-wide bounce rate all right moving on now we're going into the page analysis, and you can see there's uh, several types of reports under page analysis and entries and exits. So we'll start with the page summary. And this gives you a nice uh, snapshot of a single page. And this one is the home page is the default, but you can always change that to look at any particular page that you want to. You've got your um, your trended uh, traffic there. You've got your entry points and um, and and previous page, exit points, and next page, and then a bunch of other details um, about this page. And so if you are seeing any issues with a particular page and you want to have a quick snapshot to see what might be going on, this is always a great report to start with. So um, I always kind of like, if, if I'm seeing some anomalies or something, I always tend to go to this report first for um, page specific issues and that way I can uh, look at things. And especially if, if you're also looking at like problems with your paths and stuff, um, I often will do the full path, identify a page, and then use the, path, the page summary from there. All right, reloads report. This page um, is, can be good uh, for troubleshooting as well. It kind of shows uh, which pages are getting refreshed the most often, and that may or may not be an indication that there is an issue with the page and causing people um, to want to reload the page 
uh, again. Um, sometimes people just reload pages for you know un unknown reasons if there isn't a problem with the page, but most often it does tend to be an indicator that there is a problem, especially if you see a lot of reloads for a page. I mean, I do have like 11 reloads for this one article here, but um, that's not that's not a ton. Um, that's not too much. But if I was seeing hundreds of reloads, um, that would start being a red flag and saying, you know what, there's a problem with this page. Um, is it not loading properly? What's going on? And so this is a good report to use in terms of that type of troubleshooting. All right, so moving on, uh, the next page analysis report is time spent on page, which gives you the average amount of time spent on a specific page, which is different from your average um, time spent per visit, which gives you a breakdown of how much time people are spending per their visit to the site, which is under site metrics over there. And then if you also wanted to see time spent for the entire site, um, all visits put together, you actually have to put that uh, in through a dashboard widget. And um, I actually talked about that, I believe, in the dashboards tutorial. So go ahead and take a look at that uh, tutorial if you're one looking at the time spent per site. Here you can see a breakdown of just how much time is being spent on this particular page. This is the home page. Um, I am not surprised that the home page has a very short time spent per, uh, per um Per page for this particular page because it is the home page. People come to the home page to look for what they're wanting and click a link um, and, and exit the page fairly quickly. Uh, for anyone who's spending more than <laughs> um, you know 10 to 15 minutes, that's a long time for this particular page and most people are spending just a few seconds and I think that is absolutely fine for this particular type of page. Or if we go ahead and take a look at one of the other pages on this site, for example one of the blog articles, and let this load real quick. All right, so we'll take a blog article, click OK, and we can take a look at the time spent on a page like that. And you can see here that the time is in minutes and not in seconds. And uh, for a blog article, especially a long blog article like this one, um, you are expecting people to stay um, a longer time in, in reading the article. And so if this page had had everything in seconds, I would be a lot more concerned. Whereas with the home page is absolutely fine because it's just, you do, do a quick scan, look at what you want, click on a link and move on. Whereas with a blog article, you just want to sit there, you want your audience to sit there and read it. All right, so finally page analysis clicks to page. So how many clicks are, are, are people clicking to to get to a particular page? Now we're still out looking at the article and not at the home page. And you can see here there's a lot of clicks for um, this particular one. It's the first page viewed, so it's an entry page. Um, and that shows me that a lot of the traffic to this page is coming from a search engine or some other website. And so people are, are clicking somewhere externally and clicking on this uh, a link to this article and coming here. And I could probably verify that by going through traffic sources and, and looking at uh, traffic sources um, correlated to a specific page if I wanted to, um, but that will be for another tutorial. All right, moving on in the last set of reports, the entries and exit reports, looking at entry pages. This one should be fairly self-explanatory. These are all the pages where people are entering um, the site from, um, the home page being first, uh, how to track social media interactions and just like Catalyst being second. That's my most popular article right now. Um, and I actually wrote that, I think, almost a year ago. It's actually not one of my newer articles, but um, obviously there's a lot of interest in that particular topic. And so you just kind of see here all the various types of, of pages um, and the names of them. I'm actually surprised that contact uh, page as, um, you know, as, a, as, a, as an entry page. I think that's interesting. But be that as it may, going on to original entry pages. Now, original entry pages is a similar report. It's all the entry pages, but this is data based off of first time visits. So it's basically filtering um, almost like a segment uh, looking at first time visits on entry pages. And so it filters out all of the return visits that you that were mixed in with the previous report. And here you can see that the order changes a little bit where um, the how to track uh, social media interactions uh, article uh, ends up being number one now and home page is number two because um, that the article gets a lot more um, first time visit entries versus the homepage. 
So um, I think that's definitely something interesting to note. But you know, that's it's one uh, thing to know the difference between an entry page versus an original entry page uh, in terms of just you know the fact that they're basically filtering out return visits and just looking purely at first-time visitors. All right, looking on to another entries and exits. So we have the single page visits. Uh, this will correlate a little closely to um, the path length report and just all the pages uh, where you've had a single visit. It's like basically bounces. So how, what's the most popular page to bounce off of? Big surprise is the one article. A lot of people are coming in from a search engine and reading the article and leaving because they're getting the information that they want and they're not really interested in reading anything else. And that's, you know, that's the nature of um, a blog website like mine. All right, moving on to the final path report that we have is the exit pages. And basically, just like the entry pages, it's a list of all the uh, most popular pages that people exit my site from. And, and that's basically what it is. All right, so thank you so much for uh, joining me this week. And um, if you have any questions or want me to drill into any one of these reports further for the future tutorial, I would greatly appreciate a comment below. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, until next week, take care. Bye-bye.